So an office workstation is something that we all need as creatives. It's important that we focus on developing a really nice and clean, organized and inspiring desk setup slash office to help us really focus and really dive into some deep work. Over the last two years, I've been building multiple different setups and I've had different setups all over my apartment or all over my basement. And I've kind of figured out a place and a position where I felt most comfortable, where I just made the most sense, where I could just come home from college, I could just sit down and I could just dive into some deep work. Either it's photo editing, either it's video editing. It's a very nice and simple and complete setup that helps me just come home, put all my stuff aside in a nice organized section of the room and dive into my setup and get some work done. My name is Maxim Bayarski and I'm gonna be bringing you guys through my own personal office. So at the beginning and at the forefront of my office, my office is located downstairs in the basement of the entire house. The entire basement is kind of my living ground. It's kind of like my own separate apartment, if you want to call it. This is where I live. I have a kitchen, I have a nice little cool dining area, washroom, massive walk-in closet, a nice living room, which is where I'm actually filming this video in. And I also have a nice bedroom where I have kind of like a backdrop where I do portrait shoots. I do a lot of my client shoots for other people because I actually shoot shoot YouTube videos for other clients. I sleep there and it's kind of like a place where I could just sit down, relax and gather some of my thoughts. It's kind of just kind of like that mixture of different things. And in that room, there is a door that leads us straight into the office. So when you enter on the left side is where I have my kind of miniature storage location where I store my really important items like hard drives, SD cards, cables, things that I use on a daily basis, but I just want to put them somewhere where it's visible, but it's not really taking up any desk space or any space on the, on any of my surfaces. It has its own dedicated little space. And the way I did it was I purchased a pegboard system from Ikea and it was really cheap. It was like 20 bucks. Um, you can get some accessories. I think my whole system was around 45 50 bucks it really depends I'm gonna leave some links down below for all the products I talk about I'm gonna leave some IKEA links as well for all the products you guys can check it out it's really really nice I like it and I might actually install these pegboard system into other locations of my house like the washroom and even the kitchen it's, it's just amazing it's clean it's aesthetically pleasing and it's a great way of just storing your stuff instead of just having it all cluttered all over the table so what I store on there are things like cables SD cards and I even actually prompt my backpack when I come from college, I hang it on the pegboard. It stores all of my necessary equipment and just keeps it off the ground and helps to give it a much cleaner look in the office. It just keeps things really organized. And if I need something like a cable, SD card, hard drive, a backpack, a lens, or any of those really important items, I have a specific dedicated spot just for that. So that's that part of the room. That's where I store my stuff. Now let's dive into the main event, which is the actual desk setup itself. So the desk setup is extremely simple. There's not much on the desk itself. It's just a table, a chair, but I made sure and keep this setup as minimal as possible to give us that extremely nice and minimalistic kind of aesthetically pleasing setup where I could just sit down and just dive into some work, get some video editing done, get some photo editing done, or do some of my client work that I do on a consistent basis. And just having a clean and simple setup was a key element of this whole build. So diving into it, let's talk about the table itself. So this is an Ikea table. It is a sit stand desk. It's not an electronic sit stand desk. It's not a motorized one where you can click a button and it lifts it for you. It's a crank system where you have to legitimately crank it yourself. I haven't really found it to be that big of a deal. It was half the price. And in my opinion, um, at the time I didn't have $600 to dish out on a table. I wasn't making my own money and I wasn't gonna make my parents purchase me a table for $600. Of course, now maybe a year or two from from now I might invest into a motorized desk because I could see the benefits of it and I could purchase it myself. But at the time I had to purchase the crank desk. And to be honest, the fact that I have the option of sitting and standing for 250 bucks, it was just a steal. It was just something I needed to get. And right now over the last couple of weeks, I have been standing a lot more and standing is just an extremely important thing that you need to be doing on a consistent basis. Sitting down and sitting too much is the most unhealthy thing you can do. Like you're literally killing yourself the longer you sit. 
it. And even though I'm filming this video sitting down, I know that I'm hurting myself in the end of the day by sitting down. And I need to ensure to myself that I'm going to be standing for at least two to three hours out of that eight hour session to make sure that I'm getting a really good balance between sitting and standing. Because of course, standing for too long is uncomfortable and it's just not a pleasant experience. And the goal is to be able to dive into deep work. And if you're getting tired standing, kind of just moving around, you're kind of distracting yourself and you're kind of not really focused on your work. So making sure that you are kind of getting a good balance between sitting and standing, not only is it good for your health, but just overall, it's just great in general. And I love the sit stand desk is great. The price is amazing. And Ikea in general is a great place for all furniture just in general. So that is the furniture in the room. Now let's dive into the actual peripherals. So what I have here is an MX Master S2 mouse. It's an incredible mouse. I love it. It's just, it's been an amazing one for the last year. I've had the mouse for about a year now and it's just incredible mouse with incredible feedback. It has the side scroll wheel, which is really comfortable when you're doing Premiere Pro projects. Just really good and comfortable mouse to use. And by far, I think it's one of the best mice you can purchase on the market right now. It's not that expensive. Of course, comparing it to other mice, it's pretty hefty price tag. But in my opinion, for the money, this is the best mouse you can purchase on the market. And I'd recommend all creatives and even gamers out there. This mouse is a great option, has a lot of great feedback. It feels nice. It's clicky. It's great. Highly recommend it. And yeah, just amazing mouse. And moving on, my choice of keyboard is the Royal Club clutch white with blue LED keyboard. It was around 60 bucks on Amazon. Fantastic keyboard. But in my opinion, I think it's the best value for money mechanical keyboard on the market for the money. It feels nice. It looks nice. It performs nice. It's also Bluetooth. It's just amazing. And combining it with my MX Master has just been an incredible, comfortable setup. It's great for gaming. If you do a little bit of gaming, I do gaming here and there. Sometimes I do a bit of gaming, but for the most part, even just for productivity in general, it's just been a fantastic amazing experience. And on the bottom of those two peripherals, I have a very basic and cheap felt pad from Amazon. It's a mouse pad. It's like a felt mouse pad. It's really nice. It's comfortable. Um, I wouldn't really justify spending 30 bucks on one of these. I spent like $10 on one of those. I'll leave a link as well. Really nice felt pad. It's great. It's warm. It feels cozy. It looks nice. And it helps to contrast my peripherals from the wood vinyl of the table. So let's move on further and let's talk about the monitor. So my monitor of choice is an Acer 25 inch 1440p monitor. It's a 60 hertz monitor. I actually overclocked this monitor to 75 hertz. So it's now a refresh rate of 75, which is great. And it's a fantastic monitor. I think the best value 1440p monitor on the market, but I would not recommend for you guys to purchase it because there's actually a better monitor out there right now. You guys can buy for the same money. You can get a 4K monitor from BenQ. I think it's 27 inches and it's 4K. So it's just overall better. But if you are able to find this monitor for under 250 bucks, highly recommended slim bezels, amazing color accuracy, amazing viewing angle since it's IPS. Quality is fantastic. It's aesthetically pleasing. And if you're using something like a MacBook or anything like that, it fits the aesthetic. It's just a really nice and clean looking screen. I've been using it over the last two years for all of my photo and video editing. Just amazing screen. And if you're able to find this monitor for under 250 bucks, then it's an absolute steal. So now let's dive into the computer that I actually use. It is a Windows based machine. It is a custom built. I built it two years ago and it's still holding up quite amazingly. It has a Ryzen 7 1700 CPU, an eight core 16 thread CPU overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz, an incredible beast of a CPU. I also have 16 gigs of RAM, which I am thinking of upgrading to 32 gigs of RAM shortly, as well as I'm also running a GTX 1080, which is more than powerful enough for video editing for 4k and even more like 1080 ti um, improves a little bit and the new rtx graphics cards are only beneficial if you're doing crazy high resolution gaming and if you're shooting things like 8k raw footage then maybe investing in a better graphics card like a rtx 2080 will be beneficial but the gtx 1080 is an amazing graphics card and it just gets the job done my cpu is water cooled i have a really nice and amazing power supply an 800 watt power supply and i have a samsung s 
SSD, 256 SSD inside of there. It has the boot drive and it has all of my main programs like my entire Adobe Creative Cloud is all downloaded onto the C drive, which is that SSD to give it faster booting times and to just give it a much smoother experience and just to help the read and write speeds to be a lot faster when using these programs. And I also have a three terabyte internal hard drive that stores a lot of my junk files and my entire Steam library for all of my games that I used to play a while back. I also have an external hard drive. It's a six terabyte WD, my passport drive. It's fantastic. I've been using it. I've been actually editing off the drive for the last eight to 10 months. It's been great. Hasn't crashed. Knock on wood. I have a lot of files in there. I hope it doesn't crash. It's running out of storage. I'm going to need to upgrade it and I'm going to be getting the same exact drive, just an eight terabyte form. And the price of it, the value that you get is incredible. It's fantastic drive. It's fast. It's really reliable and I would highly recommend it. And that's where I store all of my raw footage, all of my important files like photos, videos, all of my photo and video edits, all of my raw and finalized projects, all of that sits on that hard drive. And that's kind of where majority of my work sits. So that is my computer. Those are my peripherals on my monitor. The last thing I really have on the desk is just a really nice pair of headphones. These are the ATH M50Xs from Audio Technica. Phenomenal headphones. It has a really nice and neutral sound stage. Really great for editing audio, like vocals, for music, and for video editing like I do, especially since I'm interested in doing interviews, YouTube videos like this, and future documentaries and short films. Having a really good pair of headphones that just gives you a neutral sound stage where you can really focus on getting the right sound, you have to get one. And the M50Xs are an incredible value. I got mine for around $180 Canadian or around 150 Canadian. You can get them for even cheaper in the United States, depending on where you look. But I think the best price is around Amazon. I think Amazon has the best prices for them. It's just a phenomenal pair of headphones. And the headphones are sitting on a basic standard um, Amazon headphone hanger. It's a wooden headphone hanger. And I have a nice little fake Ikea plant on the side just to give a bit more life to the entire setup. So that is the desk setup itself. That's where I get all of my work done. On the left side, I have an Ikea Alex drawer unit. It's fantastic. It's where I store even more of my equipment. If there's some things that I don't need on a daily basis or things that I need, but I don't use on a consistent basis, or I just don't have storage anywhere else for it. I just store a little miscellaneous, like any other cables that I don't use that often. This Alex drawer unit holds a lot of my other smaller accessories, as well as it holds a couple of my bigger accessories that just don't fit on the pegboard system that I talked about earlier today. So that will do it for my minimalistic office tour setup for 2019. I hope you guys found some sort of value from it. Either I inspired you to build your own office or I inspired you to improve on top of your existing office, or maybe you just enjoy the video in general. Make sure and slap the like button and subscribe for more videos because it helps me figure out who's watching, who's enjoying them. And just let me know if you guys like these types of videos, if you guys want to see more of these types of videos, or if it doesn't get enough support, then I know that, okay, people don't enjoy these types of videos and I shouldn't be making them. So it helps me improve this channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell just to not miss out on any of my other videos, just so you guys can stay up to date with all of my future content. And that will do it. I'm going to head back into my office, dive into my setup and get some more work done. I got a lot to do college work, some more YouTube videos, some more client work. So I got to get back to work. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, go out, shoot some photos, shoot some videos, enjoy the process. And I'll see you guys next time and take care.